Hey guys, Zuljin here. Welcome to Dual Universe. I have been playing this game pretty much non-stop for the last four or five days since I got access to it, and it's been it's been quite an adventure. I'm not the type of guy to play PvP games. Let's just start by that, saying that. This is a, a PvP game, but there's a lot of area that isn't PvP. It allows you to start with early game. And just like any other game where you develop a whole lot of toys to play with, you want to play with them after a little while. And that's what Dual Universe allows you to do. There's plenty of sandbox and market stuff to keep the average builder, like me, very, very, very content until the day that you really want to get crazy and mess with other players. So, I started out on some place called Sanctuary Moon, which is basically the, the starter planet. There's nothing going on here in the terms of, you know, player versus player activity. In fact, no one can grief you, no one can take or rob you unless you give them access to your stuff, but everything is secure. So you never have to worry about anything on Sanctuary Moon ever being taken away from you. And you start off with one of these things, which is the territory marker. You place one of these down and you get a little slice of heaven on the planet in the form of a hex. You can see that there's plenty of them on the map and I chose one a little bit south of a uh, local market. So um, I built a little bit of a, a starter workshop, I guess you could say. This is going to be my factory where I'm trying to manufacture containers. Um, containers you could sell on the market for a pretty good pretty good price and it takes you quite a bit to get to the point to where you can craft these puppies which are container M's. They hold a lot of stuff and what I mean by a lot of stuff in general is the things that these industry machines produce as well as the ore that you can mine and use to create everything in the game pretty much. Everything starts out with the basic materials that you can harvest from the ground and you'll find these when you first land you'll notice that uh, you'll get to an area that you decide that you want to mine from and you can't mine anything or harvest anything or interact with anything until you actually claim one of your hex squares when you do you have a load of these little guys on the map and you can harvest them just with this little harvest tool and you end up getting a little bit of ore. And just now we got 20 limestone. That's actually a tier 2 ore. Uh, but there's like coal, bauxite, um, and uh, quartz. Wait, what's the other one? There's another one. Um, hematite, which is iron. And they all refine to bars of um, that given metal. When you get this kind of given metal, you can start... Uh, either crafting in your inventory um, to kind of like process the materials. So we have bauxite here, and if we were to want to, let's say we want to make aluminum out of that, you could just search for pure aluminum. And right here, you'll see that it takes 65 bauxite. So we literally have to harvest four of those little um, nodes in order to get uh, 45 liters of aluminum and the recipes get pretty crazy from there and what you'll see here is something that you might recognize from a game like Satisfactory while it doesn't have the type of automation animation that Satisfactory has you could do some crazy stuff with linking containers to different um, to, to different industry units to produce chains of production so it's perfectly normal to be able to get something that will craft one of these container M's just by dumping ore into one chest. And <clears throat> it's neat because you can actually set these as a linked container as well. So <clears throat> for instance, let's, let's go ahead and declare this as a linked container. Now I usually use one of the other ones as a linked container. But I'm going to head out and look for some ore, some underground ore. Instead of mining this 20 at a time, which these respawn by the way. It's... it's Technically, everything in the ground is finite, but everything on the surface is not. So you can harvest as much of the stuff as you like without ever having to worry about it disappearing. So you never really have to leave, but you'll want to leave and go explore. The game kind of motivates you to do that because you're about to see how good it, mining can actually get. So you saw that I was able to just get 20 units at a time of this stuff. After a few seconds of actually harvesting with the tool, you get 20 
parts. <clears throat> okay, so there's also underground mining. Now you have to scan for these ores because you don't know where they at. It's a complete sandbox, so you have to dig to find them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out a harvest, uh, a mining, a scanning tool. So the scanning tool comes up with a maximum scanner range of about 300. Now. You have some talents that you can unlock to make this a little bit better. And I've done a little bit of that. So your range might be a little bit different than mine when you start. But what you want to do is just move out into a certain direction. Any direction will do until you find something on your claim that you can use. Now, I'm using the V key to toggle where the boundaries are. You can see this hex grid uh, that appears around my claim. So I know not to go too far. Um, so you can see there's a couple of dots that picked up uh, right here actually and when I move they're gonna move along with me you see how they're headed down that's basically the range that the selected ores are from you let's get closer to some until they're in around the hundred foot range and they're starting to flatline see as long as they're going down that means we're headed closer to them and we've got a blue one that's real getting really really close now all right, so now you see how it's starting to flatline a little bit? You want to watch when it starts to go back up. You've gone too far. This is probably about as far as we want to get until we need to dig down. So let's switch to our mining tool, and we'll expand the circle quite a bit. And we'll just start digging straight down because there's ways to get out of the ground that are a lot easier than worried about specific tunnels. I used to dig at a 45 degree angle down and now I don't even worry that much about that. Okay, let's pull out the scanner again and you can see that we're getting a lot closer to our goal. Let's go down a little bit deeper. <clears throat> And I just hit water, but I'm also somewhere around the 50 uh, meter range. And you can see that if I switch to a short range, uh, which you can either do by hitting tab and then clicking on the actual, um, you, you could click on the, um, the the type of scanner is. But what I just do is I just I usually just hit the uh, the uh, I guess it's the Alt key and you scroll. And you could go down from there okay so we're within about 50 feet of it let's go ahead and try to go down a couple more times you can see I'm in water now but there's no oxygen or anything like that in the game so you really don't have to worry and we're also flatlining still okay it's gonna become a little bit harder to see so let's pull out our light and now you can see actually you know we can't really tell up from down when we're underground so it's a lot easier to use this now we're at a zero degree angle so we're pretty much just digging straight ahead of us let's just pick a direction and take it and see if the uh, the meter changes so when you start getting close, sometimes you have to pick a different direction. And that's what I've done here. I've just decided to start going in a straight line to see what will bring me closer. And when you get to the point to where you can move forward and it just starts going down, you get within about 30 feet of it or so. I'm going to go a little bit further here because the scanner range might differ. You could get a real close scan on it and it will show you exactly where you're at. So you see I'm flatlined here, so it's got to be somewhere around here. And in fact, I moved away from it when I did that. So we're probably really close here. Uh, you can manually scan anytime you want by holding Alt and click, by the way. Uh, but I'm 30 feet away from it now, or a little bit more than 30 feet away. So what I'm going to do is I could pick a different direction and try to get closer to it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out a directional scanner now. So. What the directional scanner will allow you to do is get feedback without digging in the area. You can dig it by clicking. It's a, You make a little hole here, but you see that feedback that I have at the bottom? It's that blue wavelength that you can see right here. When you find that blue wavelength, that means you're getting a density reading from the area that you're mining. So all you have to do is dig just towards that density reading, and sooner or later, you're going to pop up with the ore that you're trying to find. Now, if we were looking for something specific, just to give you guys an idea before I reveal the ore, you can actually go to the, the list here and select everything that you don't want to see, okay? So it'll show you when you pull back up that this is a... It's a blue wavelength. So if I wanted to say, well, we only want... Uh, hematite to show up okay 
We could tell that this is hematite because as soon as I actually make it go away, it doesn't appear back. If we were looking for coal specifically, we could go for coal, for instance. But this is hematite, all right, which is going to convert to iron bars. So let's pull back our mining tool again, and we could just mine a little bit further, and we should pop up with the target. There it is. It's usually within about 30 or 40 away that you start seeing that. You'll notice there's a little bit of water there. So using the same tool that we used to dig, I'm just going to mine some of this out. And you can see I'm getting 126 at a time. That was 296. You get quite a bit more ore than you normally do from the surface stuff. You can mine a lot faster. Now, again, the surface stuff will respawn. This will not. Once this is dug out, I'll never be able to mine this again. So it'll give you the pretty much the motivation to go to different spots, uh, different planets and harvest. Plus, there's higher tier resources that are available um, in, in bigger quantities on other planets. And um, even though it's more dangerous to get them because of PvP and stuff, uh, there are some big draws to be able to get this. Naturally, you can always make your own money and buy these ores as well on the market from people that are risking their lives to sell them. Maybe you're just in the shipping and receiving services, you know, and you're trying not to try not to get into any confrontation. Or maybe you're a pirate and you're looking to get as much of this stuff as you can from other players. You can play the game pretty much however you want. The community, from what I've noticed, has been really, really cool since I started. And while there is a lot of PvP, um, right now, there's not a whole lot just due to the amount of how broke everyone is, and naturally PvP is pretty expensive. So, right now, it's just a lot of harvesting and mining and stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and harvest all of this out and show you guys what it's like when you fill up. So, I reached my inventory maximum. Uh, you can tell just by trying to mine some more, and it's going to tell you that you've reached a maximum amount of items. Now, you can see that besides the little bit of stuff that I already had on me, I just got 4,582 hematite. Now, if you would have done this on the nodes up top, <laughs> you would have gotten a lot. <laughs> you wouldn't have got a lot. You wouldn't have gotten nearly this much. But now I'm full. Now, I selected a linked container on top. And if you're in range of this, which the range can be extended by talents, you can move slot to linked container. Now, I just moved that basically to the linked container. I could view its contents right here too, just by showing you. And this is where all my other bars and stuff here. But here we are. Here's the hematite that I just set to my linked container, okay? So I could set all of this to the linked if I wanted to as well. Uh, but I'm just going to finish mining this out first. All right, there wasn't a whole lot left. This is actually the end of it. If I go back down, I'll look around. You're going to see that I mined out the whole node. Some nodes are bigger than others, but what you'll notice is now I only have about... Let me go back to my nano pack here. I only have another 468. So 468 and 45... Pretty much 5,000 liters of hematite, which is actually good. Let me send all of these to my linked container now. Now, you can easily just start going towards another spot. Like, I could pull out my scanning tool now and just find a place that I, you know, find another local ore, and then I'd be fine with it. Let's see, move slot to linked container. I don't know why this one, there we go. It was just lagging. Okay, so now if I wanted to pull out the mining tool again, for instance, bring it back up to long range and, um, and go ahead and scan, you know? I could uh, I could locate something else. You'll see that there's one about 250 away, and that's not considering everything else. I could go back to all tier one and tier twos, and I could hit it again, and you'll see that there's three nodes, one of them within 150 of me, and that one is actually. Let's go ahead and select. It's not bauxite. It's coal. So there's coal 150 feet from me, and I could do the same thing. I just have to search for it on the ground, but. What I normally do is head back. So you'll see that 449 right on the uh, the screen. That's my that's my waypoint to my, my spot. You could select waypoints anywhere. That's pretty much where I live. So you can't do anything now um, as far as going back straight up that hole because your jetpack has limited range. You basically have to dig your way out. So let's get to where we were going here. And you can aim at like a 45 degree angle up which is a pretty easy slope to walk up. And you can just start going straight up here. You can dig as far as you can and just start walking and you can eventually dig yourself out your hole. Now, 
if you you could either do that or we could have tried to find it and remember the tunnels that's how i started mining and finally you can also just force respawn if you don't have anything else so you don't lose any access to any tools or blueprints that you have so you don't drop them on death and there's a resurrection spawn node that you can create you start out with one and you can place it at your base and i have one and that's what i'm going to use right now so i'm just going to go force respawn it warns you that you'd lose all your materials and you can see here that we have we're back at our base the the little uh, resurrection node is right here and if we look at the linked container that we set up we could see all the hematite as well as the other stuff that we had put in our inventory is all here so now this hematite we could take uh, a good majority of it and start processing it and move it into bars see right now we have uh, pure iron bars, 7,867 and a half liters. And all of these machines do different things. So right now I have a couple, only a couple processing units. So we'll change the processing unit, for instance, to pure iron. And we'll select that. And uh, uh, did I stop the production on this? No, huh? let me finish and stop it. <clears throat> and now I'll select iron when i run out i usually just switch it up okay iron is selected now now i can start and it's gonna it said it's missing in ingredients here so the container that it usually pulls from my old link container is actually here so let's throw the hematite in here and just let it do its thing now we could process in our own inventory as well but you can see if I was doing some other sorts of processing, for instance, and just try to process this iron. Okay, I'll do pure iron. <clears throat> and you can see that it's 45 liters for 65 liters. So 65 liters of hematite will resort in one uh, 45 in 45 liters of pure so we'll go ahead and add to Q that one of them you can see it takes 25 seconds to process this now it doesn't hurt anything it doesn't cost you anything to be able to do this it's just much nicer to be able to work on different stuff like building while you have all of the uh, the machines doing the jobs for you not to mention if I had the factory connected to where it was actually producing something you could see that it would continue to produce while I was doing other things. And you can see here that we got the pure iron and there's actually a byproduct of pure oxygen that it makes too. You can search all these recipes and find out more just by digging through things. But that's mining 101 to tell you the truth and scanning 101 I should say. And the industry, like I said, it just takes you a little while to get there. You need to upgrade your industries as you go to produce bigger industries and bigger containers. And the, the tree just keeps going on. So if you like factory games like this, well, factory games in general, exploration sandbox games, I think you'd really, really enjoy Dual Universe. There is a lot of bugs right now. There's a lot of server downtime and there is a subscription model. So there's some considerations to make before you just jump into the game. But it's a pretty reasonable price. You can use in-game currency to actually buy subscriptions to which I thought was really really neat and there's so much depth to the game it's one of these games like Eve online that you could just play for years and years and years and years and years and just keep getting value the skill system you probably won't know some of the 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 higher tier skills to make things more efficient for months and months and months out because everything is time based but if you guys like this sort of thing I can show you some more of the game as well but i just like to keep this video contained for now. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys. And I look forward to checking you out. I've been live streaming this quite a bit lately. You can follow me on twitch.tv slash Zuljin, where I stream this five days a week lately. Well, four or five days a week. I still do variety. And uh, come on and hang out. It's some pretty chill streams. So thanks so much for watching, guys. As always, this is Zuljin signing off. And we'll see you next time.